enjoyed uh, your interview with uh, Professor Dennis Novo. It's, uh, your career has been really unbelievable to me because uh, you left the school at the age of 16 and uh, you also prepare uh, as a technician at Fi Pfizer. Mm -hmm. uh, you prepared for uh, university courses and uh, you know later you ended up doing PhD. Well, it sounds like a long journey. What uh, you must have uh, had the uh, most difficult times uh, in your life, and mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I really want to know how you overcame it. The difficult times. Mm. Well, I, it was very hard work, I have to say, and I would also say if I had my time again, I might not have done it that way because I think I really did miss out on some very good times that everybody had at university and I can't get those back. I had a good time doing my PhD but as an undergraduate it was hard work on the bus mm -hmm. for hours to go to college, home late at night after a long day's work. It was hard work and so if I'm talking to people now I always say to them, you know, go to university, you'll have a great time, you'll enjoy it, you'll obviously be good enough. There's always fear that you may not be good enough, I think quite often amongst young people. But once you're there, you'll just have such a great time. But I'm sure there are lots of young people mm -hmm. who must have similar reason or the same reason. Um, so uh, maybe financial reasons yep. yeah. or domestic reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I read an article about you. You mm -hmm. had a long break. Uh, I did, when yes. You <laughs> that was <laughs> another time. <laughs> Could you tell yes. us uh, a little um, bit about yeah, so it? Yes, so I have three children, which mm. of course was the most fantastic time, you know, I really enjoyed mm. having them. And I wanted to at least be at home for the start of their lives and to try and um, get them excited about things that I was excited about. And mm. so I used to take them around and do experiments with them, do things like this. And mm. so I took eight years break which was a very long time and considered mm. a little bit foolish at the time but I, I really don't regret it I really think no. I'll never get those years again I really mm. enjoyed them so yeah. so obviously during that time you were a perfect mother no and then, <laughs> I'm sure um, not I'm sure um, they would say did not did you miss the science um, well, yes I did and you're I a full-time mother well I, I used to do part-time teaching in the evenings and things like that just right. to sort of do something, but I and I talk mm -hmm. people from a variety of walks of life, which is interesting. I think so. I talk for the Open University. I talk for hairdressers. I talk for butchers. You know, all sorts of odd courses, mm -hmm. but people that were genuinely interested in mm -hmm. science. And so I think that was an okay thing to do. It wasn't taxing as it is mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. standing in front of a big lecture hall nowadays, but. You know, that was my way of keeping my hand in when they were small. Mm. So, uh, if one of your children, mom, you had a really great <laughs> career life, mm -hmm. I really respect. What did you say to uh, your <laughs> child who wants to follow the same step as you? Actually, it's interesting because I think probably my children don't think that they had any particular great time because I was off with them. I mean, they say to me, oh, you know, you were always busy. And I thought, well, you know, I did take eight years. How have you forgotten those eight years that I took home, at home with you? Um, I think that they did benefit from it in my experience. And the eldest two are quite scientific. And actually, my youngest son is a bit like you. He's very good at media and he's in China. So they have different careers. Mm. So one did computing and electronics, one did maths, and one did journalism and politics. Mm. So um, great. I'm very happy mm. that they found their niches. And mm. if I had any sort of inspiration, I hope I did. And I hope mm. I just opened up the world for them. I used mm. to take them traveling mm. with me when I was doing conferences, etc. So they, they got to see see the world. It's one of the great things about being a scientist is you can involve your family in what right. you're doing. So uh, obviously your chemistry teacher, perhaps we could say that he was your mentor. 
Yeah, well, at the time. I think he didn't really know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I kept it quite quiet. Yeah. I just used to work at home quite a lot, and mm. I used to find that I could understand things. I thought there was a beautiful logic to chemistry, mm. Mm. and I remember once coming into school saying, "Oh, look, I've discovered, mm. you know, this things about electronic structure," and he said, "Well." Mm. I just want you to pass the exam. There's no need to, to go into all that detail. So I was a little bit dismayed by that attitude. But mm. obviously, for a teacher, they just want you to get the best marks, and mm. they don't need you to go into more detail. But mm. Certainly, opportunity later. Right. Apart from uh, your research mm -hmm. uh, on chemistry, what would you like to do uh, from now on? Actually, I'm just the, curious to know. One of the things I do quite a lot of now is to try to encourage women um, wow. scientists because mm. I do think it seemed to be a very difficult career for women and I think quite often women say, oh, you know, it's been very hard for me, it's such long hours, etc., mm. etc. But I also think that there's a huge number of positives and we, women who are in these positions, we have to stress the positives, which are I never missed anything at school if I wanted to go to something I could always arranged to be in school. I could mm. always take them with me when I was traveling. Mm. I could, um, I, it's a very flexible career. And mm. although people say it's very long hours, mm. I don't agree that you have to be in the lab all of those hours. Mm. You can still be thinking about your science, but mm. you don't need to have this culture where you never go home. I just don't really subscribe to that view. Mm. What kind of things um, give you a sense of achievement in your life? Uh, yeah. Well, obviously the success of my children, hugely proud. Mm. The other thing is, of course, your group almost become rather like your extended family. And so seeing them achieve and go on to great universities and mm. take up you know, really good positions, that gives me a sense of pride. And I always follow how they're doing and hope that they're doing well. And I still obviously mentor them from from afar and right. see how they're doing but mm. so yes I get a huge amount of satisfaction from that and mm. one of one of my recent um, postdoctoral fellows got a big ERC grant so I, was, I felt as pleased as if I'd got it you know it's sort mm. of an, an interesting thing that your the success of your people becomes more important as you get older I think right and um, I think the um, when people do experiment Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they fi find a great result, mm -hmm. but sometimes they may not. Yeah. Uh, when, especially when they are frustrated mm -hmm. with the result mm -hmm. or with their life, yeah. uh, lives, uh, <laughs> yep. w w what, what kind of advice is to give? Well, I know that it's a very, it can be a very stressful time, and the idea mm -hmm. as a supervisor is to make it not stressful. Mm -hmm. So you want to ensure that people have I think a couple of projects, one that's quite difficult, challenging, mm. if it works would be fantastic, and then you have another one which is sort of chugging along in the background so that you can always feel, okay, I've got that sort of safe and steady project mm. on which I'm working. And for some people, that's what they'd like to do, steady stream of papers, but not really pushing the boundaries. But if they suddenly get more confident, then they can, I think, move into the much more challenging one and see how far they can go with that and that's sort of what I like to do and most people I find work quite well in that system but I think there's always times and I had them myself as a student when you think oh it's just too awful you know nothing's yeah. going to work nothing's yeah. ever going to work it's the end of the world but mm. you know it's really not and uh, mm. it will pick up again. Mm. So the as the first uh, woman Professor mm -hmm. of Chemistry at Oxford. Do you think women should be ambitious for themselves? <laughs> and uh, uh, could you tell them how they could achieve it? You know, it's very hard to say how you achieve things. Yeah. I'm not really sure. I mean, yeah. I, and I never considered myself particularly ambitious. I think, and this may be because I had a very different background. I've not try to follow what everybody else does. I think it's important to do something you're passionate about, mm -hmm. always important, mm -hmm. and something which is a bit unique. Because if you try and compete with everybody else, I think it's mm -hmm. a very hard job. And I, I remember when I came back from my career break, 
there was a lot of labs doing proteomics. It was considered the thing to do with the mass spectrometer. And I remember mm -hmm. thinking, well, I don't want to do that because, you know, the, all of these huge US labs and in the mm -hmm. Max Planck, there was some fantastic labs with which I couldn't compete. So I developed my own niche, and I think that's really what you should try to do. Mm. Uh, my final question. Mm -hmm. Uh, people tend to plan things ahead. Mm. Some that you know, tomorrow, plan for tomorrow, plan for next month, mm -hmm. plan for next year. Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I, I'm not a big planner, so I um, I plan my week probably, but not much beyond that. No, mm. you know, obviously if I'm going somewhere, I plan all mm. those events, but I don't sort of sit and plan out my career no and I don't really yeah. think you should because I don't mm. really know how you can say oh you know I'm going to be in this position in 10 years time because mm. you don't know how your research is going to pan out or how mm. successful particular ideas you have might be um, mm. that's the excitement of research I think that you don't know what's going to happen and you can't predict and plan too mm. much so Professor Carol Robinson, <laughs> thank you very much for being with us for Voices from Oxford, University of Oxford. It's a pleasure.